Taiwan. I'm Ethan Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Rescue teams are searching for people stranded in Taroko National Park in eastern Taiwan after a magnitude 7.2 earthquake shook the area on Wednesday. The quake caused the multiple rock slides and fallen boulders have blocked mountain roads. Rescuers marched on foot to reach people at several major points along the park's main artery. Over 600 people remain stranded in Taroko and Hualien County, the epicenter of the earthquake. Our reporter Rick Lauert reports on the day's rescue efforts. Back to safety. These tourists were trapped for two days in Taiwan's central mountains after the largest earthquake in 25 years struck the country. But there are more people still to be rescued. For these families, it's an anxious wait for news of missing loved ones. Dozens are still missing in this national park. The magnitude 7.2 quake hit just kilometers from here, bringing landslides down the mountains and sending boulders crashing onto hiking paths and roads. This is the main disaster response center. It's working against time and battling deteriorating weather and continued aftershocks. But the professionals here, many of whom have trained for such an eventuality for years, are determined to get everyone out safely. Rescuers have made contact with many of those stranded in the area's hotels and on its hiking trails. Others have been airlifted to safety. 64-year-old Kathleen McCatherine is visiting from the US. She was driving in the national park when the earthquake hit. So we just stayed where we were and we just basically hugged each other thinking that we could die um, because rocks were coming at us from every direction. Emotions are running high in this disaster response center as rescuers and waiting relatives prepare for another long night ahead. Justin Wu and Rick Lauert in Taroka Gorge for Taiwan Plus. Demolition work has begun on a building that partially collapsed in Wednesday's earthquake. Excavators began dismantling the 10-story Uranus building in Hualien amid growing concerns that it would collapse completely. The multi-purpose building was around 40 years old. It was previously damaged in another earthquake in 2018, but was repaired. At least 12 people are known to have died in Wednesday's earthquake. The ashes of over 100 people interred at the Hualien Memorial Hall have been spilled after the earthquake damaged their final resting place. It's an added blow to local families. Coming just as Taiwan marks the Tomb Sweeping Festival honoring ancestors. Wesley Lewis reports. Wednesday's magnitude 7.2 earthquake in Hualien proved too strong for this local memorial hall. The shaking broke open hundreds of urns, scattering human remains across the floor. The destruction came just one day before the Qingming, or Tomb Sweeping Festival, a time of year when people visit the graves of their ancestors. Families trying to get information about their loved one's remains found the hall closed. As workers clean up, relatives are left to wait for more news. Local officials have ideas about what to do with ashes that have become mingled. They're also offering help for people who want to perform religious rites intended to comfort disturbed spirits of the departed. One proposal is to rebury the remains together with a memorial marker. But talks with the families concerned won't get underway until Monday, after the tomb sweeping holiday weekend. That means that for this year, families are left without a way to perform the usual ceremonies at an important time for remembering those they've lost. Ryan Wu, John Van Triest, and Wesley Lewis for Taiwan Plus. The earthquake hit right before a long weekend, and many businesses along the East Coast were gearing up for a busy few days. But the holiday rush was ground to a halt, as Tiffany Wong now reports. A historic hotel in eastern Taiwan, devastated by the magnitude 7.2 earthquake that hit the country two days ago. For many hotels in the area, the quake has put a halt to business, right at the start of an anticipated travel rush. 
It's the Tomb Sweeping Festival holiday weekend. 后续有人打电话进来，或是运用网络来定位的、订房的，我们都直接跟他说，我们现在没有办法营业。那已经有付定金的，我们都会在下个礼拜一正式上班之后，会把这些相关的资料会全全额的退款。Attracted by its natural sights, many tourists flock here to Hualien, but hotels are only at 25% capacity, a sharp decrease from the original 75% booking rate before the earthquake. Many properties are undergoing inspections and repairs, and a major road into the county is still blocked by landslide debris. While train services have resumed, some tourists are still unwilling to travel as aftershocks continue to shake the region. Hoteliers are trying their best to adjust to their guest needs. 清明年假期间，因为地震关系无法前来的客人，我们所有的会员饭店大家也都提供了弹性的做法，哦，包含免费退费或者是可以选择保留定金使用，哦，三到六个月。Further down the east coast, which usually requires travel through Hualien, other businesses that rely on tourists are feeling the impact. 说旅行社本来是年假要来这边骑车的，昨天取消了。五组客人少了三百多个游客，影响非常的大，至少影响了五六成的生意。Recovery to businesses on the East Coast will take time, but they hope that by the next holiday season they'll be back to normal. Dolphine Chen and Tiffany Wong for Taiwan Plus. The university close to the site of Wednesday's earthquake says the fire that caused more than 15 million U.S. dollars worth of damage was the result of a freak set of circumstances. We have earthquake, earthquake, and earthquake. These three things, along with the road closure, and four of them are happening together. So it's a very rare situation. A chemical fire broke out on the fourth floor of the lab building at National Donghua University shortly after the earthquake struck on Wednesday morning. The fire quickly spread to other rooms. No one was injured in the blaze, but many lab experiments were damaged or destroyed. Students are now looking to work with other labs in the region to share resources. The Hualien County government is offering the school around 300,000 U.S. dollars for repairs. People in Taiwan who want to give up their pets will soon face higher fees and stricter procedures to do so. New laws aim to discourage the public from thinking that the government will simply adopt their unwanted pets. But animal rights groups fear it could result in more cases of abandonment. Reese Ayers has the story. Rejected by their owners, the welfare of these animals is now the government's responsibility. Shelters across Taiwan are inundated with pets given up by their owners, not wanting them or unable to look after them. It's a problem that new legislation that comes into effect in May hopes to curb. You can't put a sick person to the government. You have to pay for two weeks of health evidence. On the other hand, you can understand the health of the animal. On the other hand, you can understand the well-being of the animal is a healthy animal. In addition to requiring health certificates and an almost 300 US dollar fee, owners wishing to hand exotic pets over to government care will have to pay an extra bill of up to 310 US dollars, due to the higher costs associated with housing more unusual animals. While animal protection groups agree there's a problem with owners giving up their pets, they also fear this new legislation could backfire and bring about more cases of abandonment, not fewer. Vets, legislators and animal rights groups all agree owners need to be more responsible when adopting and raising pets. But this law could see fewer animals in shelters and more on the streets. Devin Tsai and Reese Ayers for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. I'm Ethan. I'll take care, and I'll see you next time.